this sucked. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is an epic fail. Hello, hello, Diana Smith here. Thanks so much for tuning into the channel. I breed European Dobermans. I have all of the new owners come and hey. get out of that. <laughs> Sorry. I have the new owners come and learn how to do ears and they've always asked me if I had a video for it. So this right here, I call him Mr. Angel because he has a little white mark on his chest and a Doberman with a white mark is considered kissed by an angel. He is the last pup to go home. So it's the last opportunity I have. His ears have been up once and they're standing beautifully. Today we're going to start, I'll teach you how to post, but obviously I have to take them off first. So um, you might fast forward past the removal, but you are going to have to obviously know how to remove properly when you're posting. So um, little Angel here had his ears done a few weeks ago. There's a couple things about posting that people that aren't familiar with it are unaware. So the dogs go to Dr. Midgarden. I take a road trip from Washington State to Ohio. It's a Fabulous week, dogs get undivided attention, but that's neither here nor there. I digress. Um, when they come home, their ears are cut to the shape that I want. So this female, Roulette, come here, sit. Psst. So this is mom. The crop that the puppies have is the same as their mother's, but just a smidge shorter because it's easier for people to get the ears to stand beautifully. Um, once the ears are cut, they're kind of folded up over their heads. So their heads come rolled over a little pool noodle with stitches. 10 days after they get home, I remove stitches, but the pool noodle stays on. And that's for, I don't know, another few days. And then the pool noodle comes off and then their ears are cut, but they're floppy and funny looking. So all of the scabs and stuff have to heal really well before you can start posting. So a lot of people will see floppy ears and then they see this. They don't realize it takes a couple of weeks after floppy ears to get to this point. All of that being said, I am just going to jump into it and get this done. I don't usually tie them for this because they'll spend so much time struggling. And when they get in a little while after I've done this a few times, then I can tie them. But I noticed with my other puppy, when I would tie him, he would like lay down and practically pass him. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Hi, sweetie. I got me, kid. You got it? Okay. Oh my gosh. The squeak of that trike is going to drive me crazy. <laughs> Daxton, you need to get that trick out of here a little bit. Why? Because it's loud. My vet actually recommends for your adhesive remover just using starter fluid, believe it or not, and it works fabulous. So I'm actually gonna, before I go cutting onto this, so I'm gonna do a couple different ways that you can see so the adhesive, the ear is here. So this adhesive remover, like I said, this is what the vet recommended and it's awesome. So see, it's already starting to come undone. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the bridge and be very careful when you have sharp scissors that you're not getting anywhere near an ear. So make sure you're keeping your fingers if I were to cut anything, I'd rather it be my finger than an ear. This is my bridge. So I've just removed the bridge. This is actually a taped up piece of backer rod. I prefer the backer rod method for a number of reasons. It works for me. <laughs> hi. Hi, hi, sweetie. Hi. We gotta say hi to the camera. Hi. You're the cutest. Love you. 
So right here, the adhesive remover has made my hands really sticky. It's, this is working great. But I also use this Unisol, so I'll put this. It's easy to get it right where it belongs. This is all getting wet, I kind of rub it in. And then put my finger up here to pull the tape up off of the ear so I'm not snipping the ears. There we go, the tip came off. That's the biggest, the biggest thing I'm always careful of is making sure the tip comes off gently because I don't wanna hurt their tips in any way. And there's the second one. Hi, handsome. Hi. You see how pretty he looks with his ears up? His ears are looking fabulous. You always wanna kinda of analyze the ear when it comes off. There's no bloody spots. There's no bloody spots on his tips. There's no blood down here because when they're stitched, they're stitched all the way from here all the way up on this side. So you want to make sure that none of those sores are irritated. I'll explain to you the differences in these two tapes. So this tape is called Hampton and I got it on Amazon. It is not nearly as sticky tape. It looks great because it's black. It's what he was in when you saw him. The reason I use this for his first couple postings is because it's not as sticky. This white one is called Zonas Tape. It is like the holy grail of tapes. Super sticky, does not come off. However, because it's so sticky and doesn't come off easily, it's a little harder on their ears because you saw it's a lot of work to even get this off. Um, my last puppy, this black didn't stick on him at all. I think he was just too rough. This puppy is doing great with the black, so I'm not going to upgrade to the Zonas, but I want people to see if your dog is not, if this Hampton isn't working well, Zonus would, Zonus would keep posts in an elephant. It's really that good. So I am going to take all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for right now, let him actually, hold tight, let me reverse. I am going to, I'm going to take this and I'm going to clean his ears out good and deep. Feels so good to them to have the posts out and their ears getting cleaned. So they love that and his ears are dirty. I also redo their posts every three to four days. Even if like you saw, they looked amazing still, they were everything was solid. They can get debris down in there that gets stuck underneath the post. And so you wanna make sure that's not an issue. You also wanna take them off to make sure they don't have any sores um, or problems underneath the posting or the tape. So that's another reason, even though they looked good, I took them out and I take them out every about three, maybe four days, five at the very longest. So clean his ears out really good, get any debris. Another reason that you wanna po po repost often if you're posting by yourself is that the ears a lot of times will need tweaking. So maybe sometime you're gonna need his muscles on his head to pull the ears closer or you're gonna need, you know, if, if it wasn't, his, his ears are standing beautiful. Um, but as he gets, as he gets farther along, his ears, so right now I've got a solid bridge between the two, um, which is this, and this bridge is keeping them perfect. If his ears were starting to get too close together, I'd make the bridge longer. And if his ears are standing, when he gets a, a few more postings and his ears are perfect, then I take the bridge off so that his muscles can hold his ears. And I also can do it without a solid bridge, I can just use tape. So there's so many ways to do this. I think that's why I've hesitated doing a video, um, but I'm just gonna show you the most basic way to start out with the dog, and then maybe along the way, um, I'll do more. But honestly, I won't progress until I get another dog because the puppies are gone. So the progression is gonna be the owner's responsibility after this time. So I'm gonna let him go play for a minute and clean up my backer rods. I probably can use these backer rods again, but I'm gonna take and make a backer rod just to show you. So I'm gonna let him go play. I like them to have 15 or 20 minutes so his ears dry and they're comfortable. So to use the same backer rod, I cover my backer rod. So backer rod is bent up like this. I enforce my backer rod with duct tape. And that way you're not trying to put a curled backer rod on an ear that you want to grow straight. There is my backer rod. If it's not too short for him, I, I usually can use those a couple of times. So you'll also see on this backer rod, on the end, I put a cotton ball so that it's soft. So I put it at a slant 
so that it goes down into the ear, like you see the slant, and then I cover this with cotton. I try to make it as comfortable for them as possible. I'm gonna make one a little extra long because he'll grow out of these, and that way I've got them if I need them. And I wanna show you how to make your backer rod nice and firm. So we're gonna go a little bit longer. Take a second backer rod. I always just make an extra long backer rod because I can always cut it off once it's on. And when I'm gonna cut it off, I put about a thumb, I'll go up to the ear, about my thumb above the ear, and then cut it off so there's no chance of taking the tip of an ear off. So obviously you don't wanna use backer rods that look like this to try to make a straight ear. So I'm gonna show you how to use duct tape to secure these backer rods. As you can see, there's some of it that doesn't have the duct tape, so you don't wanna put the backer rod right on the tape. You wanna go like this, make it solid, kinda of go like that. And then you just go like that. Now you have a solid, straight piece of backer rod. And this edge will be cut at a slant so it goes down the ear more comfortably. But I just want you to see how you make a backer rod go from this to this. Now you have straight backer rods, which are perfect. And I love a backer rod because the ear, you want the ear to kind of curve around it. So especially when you first start doing ears, I prefer the backer rod method. Here's a little tidbit, totally unear related. But I think that you can run a farm on zip ties and duct tape. But here's the secret. Nothing's worse than trying to find the end of the damn duct tape and sit there trying to get it. So whenever you're finished, bend the corner so that you can easily get your tape. Thank me later. So take a cotton ball and do it in half. And put your post like this and get the cotton around it. You're just trying to protect the post that's going into the ear. I need to tape that on. I don't want tape on that. So once I go like that, then I want to back tape it. It's back taping is where I want the sticky side out. So turn it like that and then roll it. Now it's sticky here and will help hold it against the ear. What I do here is I love the Gold Bond powder, and I just sprinkle a little powder on it. Now this post is ready. Those two are ready. Okay, I don't worry about the adhesive on the hair on the ears that much because I don't want to be scrubbing his ears enough to take all the adhesive off and end up bothering his ears or irritating his ears in some way. So I don't scrub real hard to get that off. And now it's time. His ears are nice and dry. I'm going to put a tiny bit of powder down each ear. Here, just a tiny bit down the ear. Rub it in. Tiny bit down. Let's see up up. Put it down here. I'm gonna use this tape again. So I need a couple pieces long enough to put the post in and a couple pieces small enough to secure the tips while the puppy's this small. Right here on a Doberman's ear, this little flap is very important. It by nature, comes back. If you were to fold that ear forward, you're pushing your ears out. You do not want that. It's a natural fold for a Doberman. Maybe it's for every dog, I don't know. I've never looked this close at other dogs' ears. But as you're taping, you want that to come back. Can you see that okay? And then you can see it from here too. We're gonna take our post that's got powder on it. I'm gonna see where my slant is. I'm gonna put the slant toward the ear. You lift, you pull and lift the ear up. You're not gonna go in a dog's ear canal itself. You're just gonna go, there's a pocket down in there. You wanna put this really low. So lift their ears up, kind of pull, push and twist and lift 
and put the ear up like this. This goes down quite a ways into the ear and then you've pulled it straight so the tip's right there. With the tape, you always tape, thank you, you always tape from the back front. So you go right here and you want that fold to go back. You very loosely, very loosely. It doesn't have to look pretty. You drape the tape onto the ear like that. See all that gap in space? The way you secure it is to squeeze it and that will secure it. If you pull your tape tight and get a snug fit, you're gonna cut the circulation off on the dog and you can literally lose the ear or lose the tip. Now, everything's secure. All I'm gonna do with this tape is cover, I don't want his tip separated like that, so I'm just gonna take this again loosely, fold it up there like that, and cover it up. And going like this is how you secure the ear. That ear is done. It's okay if it's wrinkly, but it's done. It's the, you can feel the post is all the way down here. On a dog's ear, when you're putting it down, there is a hole down there. Can you see that? So when you're putting it down in that hole, imagine you're not going in like a Q-tip in the side of a human's ear, because our ear opening is right there. With a dog, their opening is right there too, but the ear's on the outside. So no matter how far you shove down, you're not gonna be going into the ear canal. So don't worry about damage that way. You're just going down into the ear. The tip of his ear is showing right there. I wouldn't use these posts again. They're too short now, but this is Tuesday and he's going to his new home on Friday and they wanna learn how to post. So I'm posting today knowing I'm gonna be removing it and reposting on Friday, so that's okay. Um, next time when the people are here, I will use these larger posts and then I will put them down into the ear, pull the ear up and put my thumb above and then cut it above the thumb so that there's a little extra space. So these are just too short, but it's okay for the first couple days. Now sit. Now there is his ears posted. His ears are quite a ways apart. We want their ears to be at about one and 11, not straight up when you're posting, but about one and 11. So to do that, we're gonna take this little piece of backer rod and do what we call a solid bridge. And that way, and you do it near their head so that it's secure. And that'll, when I tape that on there, that's gonna have his ears standing where they need to be. Oh my God, he's so heavy. so that this isn't a miserable experience for him. So that's it. That's how you make a perfect set of ears. It's a work in progress. You're gonna tweak them every few days depending on what the dog needs. Just remember, less is more. Put as little tape on there as you can because it gives the ear an opportunity to breathe. Don't cut off circulation, change often. Don't forget, if you got any value from this video, bonk that subscribe button, it's somewhere around here, just bonk. And with that, stay safe, stay healthy, stay surrounded by loved ones, and most of all, stay grateful for all of your blessings. Thank you so much.